your unique story, our global audience. Global One Media. Hello and welcome to our series of interviews with decision makers and senior leaders of companies across the board to help you, our viewers, make informed and intelligent investment decisions. I am Munir Barazi, your business analyst and host. And today I'm pleased to welcome Tian Chu, the executive chairman and CEO of Invian Group, an Australian life science company that is spearheading the clinical advancement of an innovative photodynamic therapy aimed at treating cancer. Invian is listed on the Australian Securities Exchange as IVX. Hello, Tian. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks, Munia. Nice to nice to have you uh, meet you as well. Thank you. So let me uh, jump right into it. Could you start by telling us about Invian Group, its mission and vision, and what makes it different from its peers? Sure. So Invian is a life sciences company, and we have a novel uh, technology. Uh, which is called photodynamic therapy, which we're using to treat cancers and, and other disease areas. And uh, simplistically, uh, there's a combination of a drug uh, called a photosensitizer, as well as light. And the drug, basically, um, you can put on your skin through a topical application, you can go through IV. And what it does in cancer is that it, it localizes in um, cancer cells, but it clears from healthy tissue. And then when you shine a frequency of light, it just kills the cancer cells because that's where it localizes. So in a nutshell, we've used it on uh, a number of um, cancer applications, and we're about to start clinical trials later this year. Uh, and we've also looked at uh, the application of the technology in infectious diseases as well. Very promising. And could you elaborate a bit on uh, this photodynamic therapy technology? Um, how does it work and what makes it different from current traditional therapies? Okay, so in cancer, you know, the traditional therapies are, are chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery, and more recently, immunotherapies. And um, uh, for the first three, uh, they've been around for 150 years. And so, um, um, but they have a lot of off target issues. So there's a lot of toxicity issues with uh, chemo and, uh, and radiotherapy. Uh, and also with uh, surgery, um, it's difficult to cut out all the tumors. Um, immunotherapy has challenges. Uh, it can be very, very effective, but it only generally works in a smaller population. So in terms of what we have, uh, we, our technology actually we've, we've done, at least in a preclinical context, proven it works on a number of different cancers, and it destroys the tumor itself. But the second thing it does is actually activates the immune response. So the body starts fighting the cancer as well. So that's um, uh, th th that's a number of differentiators. On top of that, in addition to the, the, the efficacy side of things that we've done uh, in vivo, uh, we also have found that the toxicity and our therapeutic profile is, is, is very interesting. So um, we've tested at 100 times the therapeutic dose for cancer in, in, in mice and found no really um, toxic issues. So that's one thing. There's another thing that's interesting is that um, with our, our compound, um, there are two frequencies of light that activate it. One actually kills the cancer cells. The second just glows. It just fluoresces. And if you think of a surgeon coming into a, a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a cancer tumor, they can actually see where the, uh, the, the margins of the tumor are and cut out the right places. So um, we not only see ourselves as a potential standalone therapy, but we're very much open to collaborating with existing standard of care to get a better result essentially for the patient. And I imagine since it also reinforces immunity, can it be used to treat other diseases that are caused by uh, the weakened uh, immune response? Um, well, we haven't tested that yet, but certainly in the cancer context, uh, we've actually tested a combination uh, with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, which are part of the immunotherapy um, uh, 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 treatment regime that, that's possible. And uh, when we actually combined with our, um, our, our technology in combination, we actually found that tumor sizes dropped more than 60%. So we feel that there's a potential that actually even um, have um, additive um, benefits by working together with, with uh, immunotherapies. So um, I, I think that opens a lot of possibilities there. Wonderful. And if I can ask you, Tian, what excites you the most about 
this doc this this technology as you're working on it? Uh, really making a material difference in uh, in standard of care um, for cancers and potentially for um, other disease areas like infectious diseases. Um, you know, there, there's been uh, cancer still the number one um, um, area for R and D in in, in uh, uh, therapeutics. Um, you know, we haven't really cracked that nut yet, uh, and there's a lot of work to do. Uh, I think all of us uh, know uh, people very close to us that have been uh, impacted by cancer. So we haven't really tr cracked that nut yet. We are much better than we have been. Uh, but what we hope to do and what I get excited about is an ability and opportunity to bring something that that, that can really hopefully make a material difference in, in the options out there for people suffering with cancer. Very promising indeed. And if you can elaborate a bit on your clinical trial plans. Yeah, it's a good question. So a lot of people are, are really uh, are waiting waiting for. Uh, that's where the rubber hit meets the, uh, meets the road. Um, we're planning to start um, uh, at least two clinical trials um, this the calendar year, and um, we are looking to um, you know that that's the first step of a really um, interesting journey where we can demonstrate that uh, we're not just uh, you know curing cancer in mice, we actually are, are treating humans. Um, obviously, phase one trials, uh, the first trials are primarily focused on uh, on safety, um, but it's possible that there may be some uh, uh, some early indicators of, of efficacy around that. But we're certainly um, are very keen to just get the clinical trial started, make sure the safety profile is, uh, is is well established. And that opens a really wide range of possibilities uh, of other cancer indications we can work on. Um, uh, certainly in our preclinical proof of concept in vivo, we've certainly uh, uh, demonstrated efficacy in regression in pancreatic, T-cell lymphoma, triple negative breast cancers. And um, so, so we're not going to be limited to to one type of cancer, and, and that's what really excites us. Um, um, once we get through the early stage trials, we really have an opportunity to really pick and choose um, where the largest unmet needs are, and, and really try to see if we can make a difference there. There's a lot of potential indeed, and you are very ambitious. But as you know, it's normal to expect challenges along the way. What challenges are you facing right now or expect to face, and how do you deal with them? It's a very good question. Uh, one of the big challenges is actually to get to the clinical trials. Um, there's a uh, there's something called the valley of death, which is basically a... Uh, uh, when you've got interesting compounds that seem to work, uh, you know, in in a test tube, and and trying to get it to the bench, to it's basically a bedside and and into clinic, and there's a lot of regulatory oversight for the right reasons. Um, there's a lot of safety toxicity, peak pharmacokinetics, a lot of work that you have to do to basically make um, regulators, clinicians feel comfortable that you're not putting patients at risk, and that's a essential, but it's a very long and expensive journey. And um, we actually uh, uh, have been through a large proportion of it now. So we're we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel on that. Um, but that has been a big challenge because the market doesn't really care that, you know, you, it, it seems safe in a way. They care that it works on humans. They don't really care about some of the other stuff. So that, that's really been been our, our biggest challenge. But uh, we feel that we're, we're coming to, the, um, uh, to the, the light at the end of the tunnel stage. Uh, and really getting to the meaty stuff um, when, when we start sort of, um, you know, sort of starting these uh, human clinical trials. And, and that, I think, will make the uh, the market excited, as well as hopefully patients. Hopefully you'll get there very soon. And my last question, Ian, um, are there any uh, potential catalysts you could think of that uh, might be of interest to investors? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I would categorize the, the catalyst in, in uh, two buckets. So, so the first bucket is on cancer. And the first catalyst is, we've talked about getting the clinical trials, starting the clinical trials, uh, and potentially seeing um, the results of those, um, those trials, and then continuing on to see where that leads in terms of cancer. So, so definitely the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the conducting and starting those clinical trials would be a um, an interesting catalyst I think people can look out for. The second catalyst uh, relates to our um, other disease areas. Uh, we've been spending a fair bit of time on infectious diseases, and we've done some early stage work um, uh, in vitro um, uh, on testing our technology on a number of different uh, infectious diseases. So we've tested on a number of viruses, 
uh, including SARS-CoV-2, um, both Omicron Delta, we've tested on Zika, dengue viruses. We've also tested on bacteria, including the, um, the antibiotic resistant MRSA, uh, E. coli. We've tested on fungi, uh, Candida albicans. And across the board, we've actually found a technology um, um, shows effectiveness. So the question now is, um, what disease areas are we going to really focus on? And um, how do we, you know, sort of um, shortlist those areas and, and bring forward into a, a development program um, for those disease areas? Again, this is earlier stage in our cancer, uh, but if you can sort of take a step back, you can now see that we have a short to medium term pipeline um, that leads us to cancer clinical trials. And then we have a longer term pipeline that opens up infectious disease as a, a, a new, new um, area of opportunity which then gives us a portfolio and a pipeline um, um, going forward. Very encouraging indeed, and lots of things to pay attention to. Dian Chu, the CEO and executive chairman of Invian Group, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all of those insights. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Mania. I appreciate it.